Okay, I know some of you may not have time to finish the card loop in class, so I wanted to make sure that you had a chance to look back over the questions and that all of your questions were answered before your test tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work through the card loop with you. Um, if you want to write it down on a separate sheet of paper, you're welcome to, but it's really just for extra practice. So I'm just picking a random card, so I'm going to start at negative 4 and my work. So what is the equation? So I have to take this line and write an equation. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form. So that means that I need to find the slope and the y-intercept. So looking at this graph, let me autofocus lock, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to find the slope by recognizing two points. So here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. You could use any two points that you want. But to get from one point to the next, I'm going up two, up two, over one. So that's my slope. I don't need to write it as a fraction. I could just write this as two. So this is my slope, or my m. So I've got y equals, instead of m, we have 2x. To find my b, I look for the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is right down here at negative 2. So I'm going to go and look for the card. y equals 2x minus 2. Okay, so now, which one has the same slope as the equation? So same slope. Um, your warm-up today said same rate of change. So both of those mean slope. So all we're looking for is this negative 5 over 2. We want to take each of these examples and see which one has a slope of negative 5 over 2. So I'm going to take my first example, and I've got negative 3, negative 4.5, and then 0, 0. So to get from here to here, I'm going up 4.5. And if you don't know how to find the difference, if you're not good at mental math, you can take y2 minus y1. So 0 minus a negative 4.5, which is 4.5. And then here, I could take x2 minus x1. So 0 minus a negative 3 is a positive 3. So the y goes on top, so 4.5 over 3. I'll plug that in my calculator. And then math, enter, enter, it gets me 3 halves. Okay, that does not match my negative 5 over 2, so I'm going to try the next one. So we've got 2, negative 5. And you realize you can use any two points. So I'm going to use 10, negative 25, because I like whole numbers. So to get from here to here, it's minus 20. Here to here, it's plus 8. So negative 20 over 8 equals... Math, enter, enter. Negative 5 over 2. Is that the slope that I'm looking for? Yes, it is. So this is A. This is B. So my answer is B. Okay, here. Three cups of flour can make 24 cookies. How many cookies could you make with 7.5 cups of flour if the relationship varies directly? So this is direct variation or proportional, okay? So that means I can set up a proportion. So we've got cups and we've got cookies. So three cups can make 24 cookies. And they're also giving me 7.5 cups. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to take 24 times 7.5. And then I'm going to divide by that 3. So 60. It could make 60 cookies. And that just makes sense. If 3 makes 24, 7.5, that's more than double, so it should be more than double 24. And yes, 60 is more than double. Okay, here. Which is an equation with undefined slope? 
Okay, we're talking undefined. I'm going to want to use my Hoy Lux. Undefined slope right here. It will be a vertical line, which means the equation needs to be y equals a number. I mean, x equals a number. So which one of these has x equals a number? C. x equals 2. Okay. Write an equation of a line that is perpendicular to that equation, passing through the point 3, negative 4 in point-slope form. Anytime I'm writing in point-slope form, I'm going to want to use my shell, y minus blank equals blank times x minus blank. And I am using this point right here. So the y value is a negative 4. The x value is a 3. And the slope perpendicular means double flip. So I need to flip the sign and flip the fraction. So instead of a positive, I make it a negative. And instead of 2 thirds, I make it 3 over 2. So just to clean it up a little bit, instead of minus a negative, I write y plus 4, negative 3 over 2, x minus 3. And that's your answer. So there it is. y plus 4, negative 3 over 2, x minus 3. Solve for y. So I am going to take this, and my goal is to get y by itself. So I isolate other side, or opposite side, so you take the opposite to move it over here, minus 2x. So these are gone. You write it side by side, and the final step is divide. Divide everything by negative 3. So y equals negative 21 divided by negative 3 is a positive 7. Negative and a negative is a positive 2 thirds x. So here, y equals 2 thirds x plus 7. These are the same thing as long as the 2 thirds is with the x. Both of them are positive. Perfect. All right, Tommy has sold four cars this month at Happy Nissan. Each week he plans on selling three more cars. To find the slope, you look for the words each, per, or every. Do we see any of those to be able to find the slope? Each week. Each week he plans on selling three more cars. So the slope here would be the 3. So 3x, and it's starting off with 4. This would be your equation. That 3 is the slope. Okay, this one I like to use a graph. That graph's a little bit small, so I'm just going to use a different graph right here. Okay, they're giving me the point 6, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. And 9, 7, 8, 9, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. So now that I've got a graph, I can see that the slope is up 1 over 3. And I know it's going to look something like this. So if, to go backwards, I would also be going down 1, left 3. Down 1, left 3. Down 1, left 3. It's asking me to determine the y-intercept. So now that I've finished graphing it, and check it, okay? So it should have a positive slope, because this has a slope of one-third. Is that a positive slope? Yes. And my y-intercept is one, two, three, four, five, six. Zero, negative six. Y-intercepts have a y-value matching up with zero. Work on the other ones. 
All right, here, solve for y. So we've got another solve for y. y minus 7, 2 thirds times x plus 6. So my goal is to get the y by itself. I have a number outside of parentheses, so I'm going to distribute. So y minus 7 equals 2 thirds x, and 2 thirds times 6 is 4. My y is almost by itself. To get rid of this minus 7, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. So y equals 2 thirds x plus, and that 4 and 7 gives me 11. So my last question, y equals 2 thirds x plus 11. It's asking me, what is the zero? I swear to everything, do not miss this question. Zero means x intercept. There's a question this simple on your test. Do not miss it. So we go to where x intercept right here, and that's at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. And does that take me back up to the top? Yes, it does. If I was to write this as a point, it would be negative 4 comma 0. X-intercept has an X value matching up with 0. Make sure you finish your quiz is. Um, if you need help on it, watch the video. Bye.